Hello students. I'm adding this extra short talk on quantile regression because some of the topic today went a bit uh, quickly and I talked to some of you afterwards who said that would, uh, you would appreciate to have just a few more details and a little extra time to talk about these things. And I just want to remind you that uh, whenever, whenever you are worrying about these things, just go ahead and ask me and, and please use this uh, padlet here and post those questions there. If you're thinking about these things, then someone else is probably also. All right, so firstly, the, the two models that I talked about in the lecture, the heteroscedasticity model and the heterogeneous parameter model, only the heteroscedasticity model is, uh, is actually in, um, <clears throat> in the, the book. The heterogeneous parameter model is one that I added on the slides which I uh, feel is an important model to understand. Um, and uh, I covered these in, in uh, quite some detail today, so I, I won't talk too much about them. But they're two different models, both of which can be estimated using the same criterion function. Um, and the, the, uh, it's, not, I haven't, it's not clear that the two models are nested. I don't think they are. Maybe they are, but that's not, a, uh, it's a, it's a separate point that there are two different models which may contain and which may not be sub-models of each other. Uh, so there's a wider class of models that can be estimated with quantile regression techniques. So this was the heteroscedasticity one and this is the heterogeneous parameter one. And the heterogeneous parameter one you can rewrite as having an error term like this uh, and then we can write up a condition on, on that error term. That's in, in, in many other textbooks, this is the way that the quantile regression model is written up. And the beta will then uh, vary with tau. So there will be a different beta for each tau uh, in that case. When you, when you estimate made them think about that. <clears throat> and, um, oh yeah, just to add, when you, when you simulate data from, from a model like this, what you specify is a full functional form for give me tau, then I will tell you what beta you have. When you simulate data from this heteroscedasticity model, then there's just one beta and one alpha, and then you're ready to simulate. So in that sense, from this model here, it's not clear what the individual's uh, quantile is, because uh, either you have a higher epsilon and that could put you up in quantiles, but you could have a low x uh, at the same time and that would drag you back down. So it's not, you don't have a clear quantile here, whereas in this other model, um, taus, um, we interpret them as the quantiles, but they are the conditional quantiles. So same, same way you also have it that with a higher or lower x, you can be put in different quantiles. Um, let me show that uh, with some of uh, some of the data from the code here. Here, uh, whoops! Let's make this. It looks a little funny. That's strange. Okay. Anyway, here in this data, you have different x values, and the guys in the top at any given x value. Then the higher the tau, the higher the quantile will be. But you can have that uh, this guy over here, he drew something that's like the median tau, but he's uh, but if you go over to these lower x's, then this is a person who's this person here is in the top quantiles, but he has a lower y value because his x is much lower than over here. So that's in the sense in which the taus are your quantile conditional on being in some region of x. All right, 